Thank you everyone for joining us today. Today we have our first cooking class of this semester and I call Tejas and Ania to join us and start to cook for us. Hey everyone. Um, Rafael, do you want us to begin? Yeah, sure. Just introduce yourself and talk about your dish. All right, so I guess I'll go first because I'm already unmuted. Hi, everyone. I'm Tejas Chakraborty. I'm 15 years old and I'm from India. Today, I will be cooking a dish called chicken tikka, which is a very famous dish from India. I'll pass it on to Ania. Hello, I'm Ania from the Philippines. Today, I'll be making halo halo, which is a classic Filipino dessert here. So, they just do your main dish first and desserts last. Okay, fair enough. Before that, I'll just put on an announcement on uh, Discord for everybody else to join because we have pretty low attendance compared to our previous meeting. So, you want me to do that? Or you? Oh, I got it. Yeah, done. Um, all right, let us begin, um, everyone. Wait. Um, Can you see my chopping board? Or you cannot wait. Hey, Jess, you might want to disconnect audio from your other device so it doesn't echo. No, what we are seeing is your face. Rafael, look at this other camera. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Okay. Oh, uh, now you can see it. You can, you can kind of see it. You can kind of not yes. see it. I understand. Wait, okay. let me pull my table a little bit closer. Um, yes. So, hi, everybody. We are going to be making chicken tikka today. And for that, the first thing we'll be needing is chicken. Okay. I, okay. Wait. Wait. Shit. Okay. Um, you can see it on the um, chopping board right there. We have some um, lean chicken breast. Um, we're trying to make this as healthy as possible because Indian cuisine has a very um, famous stereotype for being very, very fattening and very, very unhealthy. So without further ado, let us begin. We're going to begin by chopping this into roughly two by two inch um, cubes. You can't see the other camera, by the way. Why can you not? Because I can see it. Um, um, can you spotlight the other camera, Raphael? Yeah, yeah. we see both the chicken and you. Yeah, so can you, Rafael, what if you, you turn your audio chicken? off on the one? No, no, not me, not me, not me. Rafael, could you support uh, the chicken? We can't choose both. We can only choose one of the cameras. Yeah, yeah, only, only spotlight the chicken. It's fine. You can just hear my voice and see the chicken. Yes, perfect. Okay, can you guys see the chicken now? Because I can. Um, yes. Yes, great. Okay, so we have a boneless chicken breast over here. We're just going to slice it up into roughly two by two inch cubes. So just simple cubes over here. Um, you want to make it as um, even and as rectangular as possible because um, so that they don't cook unevenly when they're on the flame because they're not being cooked in something like an oven where like they're surrounded by heat. They only have one source of heat, so it's going to have to be very evenly cooked. Um, okay, question, is there any like vegan, oh, yeah, vegetarian on. versions Sorry. of this or the Pacific like what? chicken? I think there were like two questions. Okay, fine. Um, I'll take your question first. Um, yes, there are vegan versions of, no, there are no vegan versions in my mind. Um, there is something called um, champ, which is a very famous Indian street food from North India which is made using soybean. Ideally, it cannot, ideally, it's not prepared in this way, but it could be prepared in this way because it has a very meaty texture. Um, other than that, there's something called paneer, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is basically cottage cheese. It's very, very popular in India. And uh, that is often used as a vegetarian substitute. Um, okay, interesting. That's cool. Yes, Kevin is right. I'm substituted with paneer, you're right. We do have a paneer tikka masala, paneer tikka as well. 
All right. So now that we have diced up our chicken evenly, we're going to take it in this bowl right here because we're going to marinate it. Um, okay, so you guys can see me putting it in the bowl. Yep, hey, you yep. spotlighted me. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, all good. Okay. Okay, um, so now what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to take a little bit of yogurt or curd and uh, we're basically going to take a spoon from here and measure about um, one fourth of a cup. Um, yeah, chop is a vegan option, Jigisha. You're right about that. So I have um, measured about one fourth of a cup of yogurt. Um, this is completely plain, not flavored at all. No salt, no nothing. I'm just going to add this to the chicken. And uh, now we will be adding spices. So um, I have a great assortment of spices over here with me. Um, let me just show that to you guys. Um, so wow, that's these a are various Yeah, I mean, this is like not even a fifth of my mom's collection. There's wow. a lot more that we use. <laughs> you, you know a lot um, of All right, so let's begin. Yeah, yeah. So let's begin with one of the most common ones. This is um, turmeric or haldi as we call it in India. We're going to take a very little bit because we just need this in this scenario for coloring, not really flavoring. So not too much, just a little bit. And we're just going to add that. Then uh, we're going to add some chili powder. So there are two types of chili powder that actually goes into this. The first one is called um, tikha lal. So tikha lal is a spicier variety of the chili powder. And uh, we're going to put a pretty decent amount because I like to eat my chicken tikka a little bit spicy. Um, so yeah, roughly about that much. Not too much because it's, it packs a punch. There's another type of chili powder that we're going to add to this. This one is a little bit brighter as you can see. Um, it's called Kashmiri Lal. And this one is basically from a region in India called Kashmir, uh, which is a northern state in India. This one is used specifically for coloring. So, um, it, it's, so it's not this food is, coloring. This is, this is all natural color? Like even though it's yeah. a dried pepper, essentially yeah, it stays so bright red. Yeah, complete, completely natural. In fact, it, it's not spicy at oh. all. Like if I could like just take my finger like this, doesn't taste of any spice. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. So um, take a little bit of Kashmiri lal, um, add that to the chicken. And uh, then we have this other very, very commonly used spice, cumin powder. So there's actually two varieties of cumin powder that are utilized often in India. Um, this is how it looks like. So there's roasted cumin powder and there's non-roasted cumin powder. Today we'll be using roasted cumin powder because that gives it a little bit of an earthiness. Not too much again because it's very strong. Um, just, that, just that much. And... Uh, I'm sorry, don't mind the construction noises in the background. Uh, can you guys hear me because the construction noises yes, in the background? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. All, okay. all good. Okay, no worries. Um, great. So I'm really sorry for all the construction noise, but uh, I'll just try to speak a little bit louder because um, this is India. We have noise everywhere because there's people everywhere. Um, it's not a problem, this, not a problem at all. Yeah, this is called um, coriander seed powder or dhania powder. We're going to add a little bit of this because this is also a little bit like pungent. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, in terms of the spices, we have one last thing left, which is um, salt. Salt needs to be added to this and uh, not too much again, because salt, uh, because, because the thing is, that um, this contains yogurt and yogurt is going to release a lot of water when it's cooked, right? So when it's cooked, it releases a lot of water, which means that this is going to become very dry and therefore it's going to become very salty. So we're not going to add too much um, salt to it. All right. So um, now it's time to give this a very thorough mix um, and just like massage the spices in. Um, 
and yeah that's basically our chicken that's been marinated um that's done right there so um now we move on to the cooking part of this entire dish so it's um this chicken i'm not going to be using this exact same chicken because um this this particular chicken needs to marinate at least for 24 hours uh, but i will be using another batch that i made yesterday before time so that um, we can get ahead with our cooking Um, okay smart let me just wash my hands of this all right i'm back so um, this is the batch that i made uh, before hand i don't know if you can see it very properly um let me just bring it over here um so they've already been skewered uh, by my mom who decided to help me out so each one has about 3 pieces um not to overcrowd it because we don't want it to um break off and just simply not cook through and what we're going to basically do is uh we're going to uh we're, we're going to take a small pan over here um it's it's a grill pan ideally this would be done in something known as a tandoor now a tandoor is a type of um, traditional indian oven uh, which uses coal to power your cooking so often um, tandoors um, are utilized in restaurants etc to cook but most homes in india don't have a tandoor so we instead will be utilizing a um, grill pan um so we're just going to wait for this to heat up a little bit um now ideally you would try to utilize something like um mustard seed oil or vegetable oil or rice bran oil uh but because we're trying to make this slightly healthy i know this is not traditional we're going to use a little bit of olive oil but i know that's not really true or like that's not really true to our traditions but um that's just the healthiest alternative we have right now um so yeah i have a little bit of olive oil over here um i don't know if you guys can see it it's right there i'm just going to wait for the pan to heat up a little bit and then we're going to just pour in a little bit of olive oil so the cooking process is relatively fast yes Okay just how often do you cook a, a meal like this like it seems like you know what you're doing so is it something that you really like you personally not your mom prepare that often Uh so you could you just repeat that uh, how, how often do you personally cook a meal like this Is it Okay um personally I cook for um I cook about um I cook about 4 days a week um not too often but I try to practice as much as i can uh-huh. um i i try to help out my mom i don't do the entire cooking process often but yeah i do that um but yeah whenever i can i uh, do like to help out in the kitchen uh, fun mm-hmm. fact about indian mom we eat it when you try to help them out in the kitchen <laughs> yeah, because, yeah 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 uh, yeah because because they always believe that i'm too messy like uh, that's something that my mom still holds against me but uh, not to worry all right the pan is getting pan is getting a little bit hot now and we will um slowly add our chick uh, our our oil into it um so little bit of oil not too much um just to coat every single grill mark um, okay i can do with a, i can do with a little bit more oil little bit more um Uh, hey Tejas, uh, Linda is asking, yeah. can you use a normal pan if you don't have a grill pan? Oh yeah, by all means. Um, the grill pan would be really effective to get grill marks. But uh, if you don't have a, a grill pan, by all means. In fact, my mom was actually recommended that I um, use a regular pan, but the grill pan makes it actually look a little bit nicer. That's why I opted for the grill pan. All right, so we're just going to wait for this to heat up a little bit more. and then we're going to uh, put in our skewers so the cooking time is not actually very long it only takes about 10 minutes at max um so we'll be done um just in time and uh, one trick that my mom taught me so if you're not adding too much oil to a pan um so there's this um it there's a chance for it to stick so what do you do in that scenario you add a little bit of salt so um, you just sprinkle a little bit of salt everywhere and uh, that just helps it avoid from sticking so you just need like, shake that around a little bit and uh, yeah uh, now you're done 
Um, all right, so now that's hot enough. So we're going to turn it down, like completely down to um, simmer. And uh, we're going to add our chicken in. And we're going to place them um, evenly apart. Uh, Yep. Um, so now, um, since they are getting cooked, we're just going to um, cover them with a pan and let them stay like that for uh, about five minutes. So we, in that in that time, we will uh, make a accompaniment for our chicken tikka. Um, so I have another bowl over here, and I am going to take a little bit more of the same yogurt that I was using a while back. Just add that to my bowl. And alongside that, I will add a few accompaniments. Um, I'll add a little bit of my uh, red chili powder. Um, um, I'll add a little bit of uh, mint. Um, And I'll also add a little bit of um, I'll also add a little bit of salt to this because um, obviously we don't want um, food that doesn't taste salty. Um, and yeah, so I'll just give this a little mix. I'll just get a spoon from there, and uh, then we'll have a dip ready. Um, now traditionally, a chicken tikka would be served with something like. Um, a chutney, a mint chutney, uh, which is the most common form of uh, accompaniment for all sorts of tikkas and kebabs in India. But um, I don't have that right now, and that's a little bit lengthy because uh, you want to um, like give time to the mint and everything to like get to know each other. But um, in the meantime, uh, but in the meantime, we'll just be using this. Okay, so here we have our little dip ready. Um, let me show it to you guys in there. And this is what we will be serving alongside our chicken dipper. Okay, so let's just check on how this is doing. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. We'll give it like a minute or two. Uh, and then we're going to crank up the heat a little bit. Um, and then we're going to crank up the heat a little bit towards the end as well. So what this actually does is this like gradual cranking up of the heat sort of replicates the way the tandoor works because the tandoor is essentially like an oven and it's enclosed completely. So as time passes, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, so we're going to uh, like basically be replicating that of sort. Um, um, I think there's a question in the Q&A. Yes, we have a question from, oh, you are reading. Yeah, um, if we don't have that much spice, what spices will be enough for the dish to be called chicken tikka? Okay, um, ideally, you can um, go without the turmeric. Um, you can go without the cumin powder if you don't want it because like some people don't like it. I would really recommend that the... Um, the, the the coriander powder be included if you don't get hold of the same kinds of chili powders you can definitely substitute it for a mixture of paprika and cayenne but really try to get the original because it doesn't taste the same but it can sort of replicate flavors otherwise i think everybody has like um flavorless yogurt and uh, then we'll just also be using a lemon in the end but i think everybody has that what's in the sauce it's not a sauce really, it's just like a mixture of yogurt, um, the same red chili powder that I used, a little bit of salt and a little bit of mint. So yeah. Um, all right. So it's been about five minutes. So now we're going to um, like take this off from here and we're going to crank up the heat. Uh, we're going to increase it to medium and um, then we're going to let it cook for about three minutes like this. So. At medium, it's going to cook for about three minutes. Uh, we can check the underside, how it's doing. Wait, um, oh no, yeah, that's stuck there. 
uh, yeah, so we can let it cook for a bit more on the other side because it's not really done right now. And that's understandable because we were cooking it at a very, very low temperature. As you can see, there's a little bit of water right now that's being released, and that's because um, we were cooking in a little bit of yogurt. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for this dish, I guess. So does anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. just there was one in the chat about um, can you use um, fresh herbs as a substitute for the spices? Um, I don't really think you can use that because the thing is with the coriander seeds, it's um, like the purpose of the coriander seeds is to sort of give it a little bit of a punch. So coriander really doesn't have the same punch, you can't. Um, cumin, there's no herb in that scenario. So um, yeah, so you can't ideally uh, use like the actual seed as a substitute, you need to like grind it into a powder. Um, yeah, so that's the unfortunate part of Indian cooking. It's that if you don't have access to the spices, it gets really, really difficult. And uh, that's one of the challenges like that all of my relatives like living abroad face because you barely have access to the same spices. You do in certain places, but it's just difficult and it's costlier. So yeah. Uh, yeah, Emily, you're right. Um, um, I guess fresh herbs, fresh herbs are, are very, very good. In fact, fresh herbs form a very, very important part of Indian cooking. Oh, did I just, okay, yeah, no. So we're getting a little bit of a char. Um, so I'm just gonna keep on turning this from now on and uh, just wait for it to cook through completely. So it's getting a little bit darker, but it's gonna take some more time. And uh, once it hits about three minutes, um, at this temperature, we're going to increase the heat up to high. Um, so, have you guys ever tried any form of Indian food before? I'm going to say yes, but you're probably going to judge me. So, I'm going to say no. How about that? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, you've told me that you have made, uh, that, that you have tried um, samosas and stuff at home, haven't you? So Correct. that dog, but <laughs> filling is not traditional. I don't know how you got um, carrots in your samosas, but that is not traditional. I don't know what that is, Leon. We called it being skilled. Don't judge. No, no, we don't. We don't. We really don't. Okay. And now we're just going to crank this up to high. And we're just going to um, like cook it at a high heat um, so that it gets cooked through completely. As you can see, it's not turned out to be very, very red because um, um, because traditionally what happens in restaurants is that um, the redder the chicken tikkas are, they really use um, a lot of red food coloring, but this is completely natural. If it's natural, it often turns out to be a little bit orangish. Um, where you come from, you sometimes use cooking cream on meat instead of yogurt. Is the yogurt still the best option or the cooking cream just makes it a little bit different? Um, I have not really tried making this with cooking cream. I think the only time we use cooking cream in India is to make dishes like butter chicken or like um, paneer butter masala. So basically cooking cream gives it a little bit of a richness, whereas yogurt gives it a little bit of tartness. So when you eat this, you're not going to really taste the yogurt, but you're just going to taste a hint of tartness, which I don't think the cooking cream will give. Um, but that's, but that's okay. Like if you don't get hold of um, yogurt, I guess you can try to substitute it. Who knows? I've never tried it. You can try it. Um, what do we have in the Q&A section? What does yogurt add here? Yogurt adds a sense of tartness. It also holds the spices together uh, because you can't dissolve spices in water, but you can dissolve them in milk and yogurt. And you obviously don't want to put the chicken in milk. You want to put it in something that's byproduct of milk, which is yogurt. So yeah. Um, just gonna wait for this to cook through completely. Um, and I'm just gonna move them around a little bit. Uh, okay, so we're developing a little bit of a char as you can see on some of these. Um, and that's a good sign because we want this to be as charry as possible. Um, okay, so it's getting a little bit dry in this thing. So there is one uh, very common trick that my mom likes to use which is that she just takes a handful of water and she just drops it in there. 
and that releases a lot of steam, but that also sort of tenderizes the chicken quite effectively. Um, and we're just waiting for it to cook through. That's a great like sear that we're talking over there. Um, so these guys like barbecue because this is technically a barbecue dish. Yeah, it's looking good. Thank you. Yeah, do you guys like barbecue? Wait. Rafael, you're Brazilian, right? Brazilians love their barbecue, don't they? Yeah, we love. I <laughs> I must confess that <laughs> if I could, I would eat every day. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. I've Why don't you Rafael? Brazilian barbecue once in my life? What what? No, you just you say you hate Rafael. <laughs> no? I said, why didn't he? Why doesn't he have barbecue oh, every day? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. My, my, my theory is a little bit messed up. But um, yeah, Brazilian barbecue is really good. I would say Brazilian barbecue alongside Korean barbecue are probably among the best in the world. Um, but you guys should really try Indian barbecue as well because Indian barbecue is really, really good as well. Um, yeah. Also, Emily, you'll be proud of my t-shirt. I don't know if you've seen it already, but Star Wars. Hey, I love it. And also, as someone that lives in the southern United States, I take offense to you saying that we don't have awesome barbecue. <laughs> I mean, come on. Have you ever tried Korean barbecue? It's heavenly. It's actually like insane. Well, uh, yeah, but we are special too. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Um, <laughs> are we done? Um, yes we are okay um, I'm just going to let so this one's actually done so I'm just going to take this one out um, and keep this aside I'm going to let the others cook just so that they get cooked through a little bit more um, the disadvantage of having such a gigantic pan and um, such a tiny little frame, uh, flame underneath it is that not everything gets cooked very evenly. So uh, we need to time things a little bit accordingly. What my mom often likes to do with um, like cooking these types of things at home is actually use a different kind of pan. It's called a, it's called a karai. Um, so a karai is basically a slightly flattened out pan and that basically uh, makes the bottom really, really hot. So therefore the things cook a little bit faster. So are we done? Um, yeah, I would say we're done. It looks very yummy, Tejas. I'm hungry. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna plate up now. So those are my chicken pickles and I'm going to add a little bit of like the sauce or like the dip or whatever you want to call it at the side and uh, yeah um, those, that's my chicken pickle that looks really cool I'm not going to say it looks amazing because vegan vibes but it actually generally looks very good Leon the word is amazing <laughs> okay fine fine <laughs> it's amazing yeah that's my dish um oh, oh one last thing one last thing i forgot i almost forgot um i have a sliced lemon over here um and we're just gonna drizzle a little bit of lemon on top because that's just customary and now we're done yes so i'm done now and i'm gonna pass it on to ania to make her dish so i'll just like um Switch off my camera from here. Wow, my phone's heated up. I didn't realize that that would be something that could happen as well. But uh, yeah. Very smart. Congratulations, Tages. Can I tell you, while you were cooking, you inspired me to cook my food for the weekend, which is not usually something that I do. But impressive that you cook four times a week. Like, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 14. I'm um, 15. Wow. Oh, wow. I just forgot my own. <laughs> um, but you help your mom four times a week to cook? Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Yes, I do. That's really impressive. And uh, and you do it just to practice, right? Or you do it because... Just to practice. 
Does your mom make you cook with her? Uh, no, 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 no. She would, uh, she would rather prefer me not being in the kitchen because Indian moms like have their own method of doing stuff. So right. even if you like upset them a little bit, they go ballistic. Um, so yeah. Right. But this is your really only opportunity to learn how to cook, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, I, I think it's amazing. Um, and going back to what Emily said about the barbecue. Yeah, in the United States, um, the South is really famous for their barbecue. So you guys know the Americans are really known for like uh, hamburgers, hot dogs. But then, you know, the, the, the summer food is like barbecue chicken or barbecued steaks or i i mean no wait but what else do we barbecue emily i don't really uh, eat so I don't ribs brisket ribs, like ribs, exactly i meant yeah i meant ribs but um yeah so but what you cooked i think is a much healthier version of uh of barbecue which i really appreciate so good job on that so the problem is that we can't taste it yes so have you tasted your cooking? How is it? What you were cooking? So that's the only way that we can tell if it turned out good. Oh, wow. I'm actually impressed with myself. Oh, I yeah? Cook well, but yeah, actually turned out to be pretty well. Oh, okay. Perfect. Nice. Excellent. So we're, we're going to have to trust you. So I guess now we're doing uh, my country's food. So Ania, I'm going to be so sad because I won't be able to taste that. But good luck. <laughs> Okay, hi. Maybe Raphael can change whose pin. Yes, I will. Wait a minute. I will get here a few. It's full screen. Where is Ania? Where is Ania? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for my dish, we're making halo halo, which is, which literally translates to mix, mix in Filipino. And this is a very colorful and sweet dish. So in my ingredients that I gave in the flyer, I did not put any measurements because you're supposed to do it according to your liking. You can add whatever you want. You can add ice cream, you can add bananas, you can add anything. But with me today, I have kamote, banana, gelatin, sago, and Another color of gelatin. Okay, and girl, people do not know what camote is. Okay, so explain. <laughs> Wait, Ania, question. You have yeah. made of gelatin? What do you mean? Yeah, gelatin. Gelatin. Yeah. gelatin. Okay, so we're going to have to put some, some English words that go with that. <laughs> I was, I was almost going to ask her for subtitles. <laughs> I think, yeah, you mean, I subtitles. Gelatin is English in Filipino. It is, but it is, it's the Gulaman version of gelatin, right? Yeah. Okay, so they don't have that in, not in the United States. Okay, so <laughs> it's... So let's jello. just explain it. It's like jello, but really, yeah. really thick jello. And oh. it's so thick that when you cut it, it never loses its shape. Oh, wow. yeah. Does it still like wiggle? It wiggles, but it's like, imagine Emily, like you drop it and you know how if you drop it's jello, like it would explode? No, uh -huh. gulaman or jelly, right? It, are you using gulaman? And I'm using, oh, yeah, gulaman. 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 Okay, so when you drop that baby, it stays the same form. Like it's a very mm -hmm. dense version of jello. So it's like a one of those like rubber bouncy balls. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Uh, okay, so Ania, you're going to have to explain to them what camote is. Camote is sweet potato. Now I have another thing here, which you won't know. It's Ube halaya. This is sweet, is pur baby? sweet purple yam jam. Oh, okay. yes. Okay, so yeah. we have in the Philippines, or actually all throughout Asia, we have what we call um, um, ube, which is a sweet potato that's purple. 
And when people mash that up, they add sugar to it. And I think that's what you have, right, Ania? Yeah, it's a sweet version. Then I also have white beans. And I think everyone knows what this is, right? Yeah, again, not a typical thing. But yes, you can buy that at the Asian store. It's like typically people buy beans and then they cook it like a soup. In the Philippines, we put sugar in it and make it into dessert. <laughs> Okay, then we have this. This is my favorite childhood snack. It's called Super Sticks. So this is chocolate flavor. This is pandan flavor. Pandan is the leaf that's usually used in most Southeast Asian food. And it looks like this. It's just a stick with a hole in it and all the flavorings inside, if you can see it. It's like frosting, right? Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I guess we'll start. Who's in there with you? Uh, somebody to help me translate what it is in English. Is it your papa? <laughs> oh, it's my household helper. I'm actually making it for them because it's, I can't eat this. This is super heavy for me right now. Okay. So we're making it according to their liking instead of my liking. But, but this is really according to your liking because in Jollibee in Hawaii, they have leche flan on top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, yeah. Uh, so we're getting a Jolly Bee here in uh in South Florida. Uh, it opens next week. So for those of you guys who don't know what Jolly Bee is, explain, Ania. Jolly Bee is bigger than Macdo here. No one here is like Macdo is like number two. Jolly Bee is number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to say that McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's because yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, well, it's only in the Philippines where Mokda is number two. And I realized nobody in the U.S. says Mokda and it's like McDonald's. It's McDonald's. That's right. Say that's that's the name. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have glocalized the name of McDonald's. We say Mokda and like Mokda is just secondary. Our school aims for Jollibee more. Yeah. So we're opening the Jollibee in Fort Lauderdale, I think next week. And I was looking at their uh, menu and Ania, I just have to say, I'm completely disappointed. How can they call themselves Filipino restaurant when there is no lumpia, there's no pancit, there's no adobo, and there's no rice. There's, how do you have no rice no, on your wait. menu? Jollibee specialty is spaghetti. It's the jolly spaghetti. The difference yeah. of Italian Bolognese and Jollibee spaghetti or Filipino spaghetti is that our, everything we have here is sweet. Our, our spaghetti is sweet because we don't have access to that much tomatoes. So we have banana ketchup. It's oh sweet God. and it's amazing. So, and then I also looked, Jollibee's uh, other uh, recipe is fried chicken. Yes, that's, a, that's, that's really what they serve. They don't really serve pancit because it's a fast food. So it's mostly like spaghetti chicken out, spaghetti chicken out. The, neither one of those are Filipino foods. I just want to say. Jolly spaghetti, <laughs> which makes it Filipino. <laughs> Philip, they have Filipino style, the Italian spaghetti and the yeah. American fried chicken. Got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I guess I'll start now. Yes, yeah, they said. And yeah, before you start, okay. sorry. Okay. Do you need two cameras to show or just only one? You can take out the one that has only my face. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'll start now. They said they only like two to three scoops of everything. You want more? Apparently, they want more. More pop? Okay, banana. Then next, we'll add banana. Since this is according to their liking, there's someone telling you what they want. <laughs> so I have to look in front of me. So how did you prepare your camote, which is sweet potato for those of you guys who want a translation? Did you boil it? it? I got it from the restaurant. Okay, because, if you were not buying it at the restaurant, how would you prepare that to potato or that camote? You would boil it with sugar. Sweet, everything's sweet. 
Then this is banana. It doesn't look like banana, but it's banana. I promise you, it's banana with sugar. Sorry, Ania. If uh, after you boil it, do you chop it after you've boiled it, or you boil it and then you chop it? I think it works either way, but I think for us, we chop it then we boil it. Ah, okay. And I see so much question. It makes me hungry. Okay. So. Next, we're going to put bananas in. This is bananas, I promise. Anything else? Okay. Apparently, they're on a the diet. They don't want a lot of everything. They only want one scoop. Next, I'll put gulaman for them. This is how it looks. It's like what Dr. B described earlier. So, Ania. I'm, I'm afraid to ask you, but where did you get the gulaman? Where did we get the gulaman? <laughs> <laughs> I know this was prepared by us, but because it's, it's in a jar that we just randomly have. So I know this one was prepared by us. Okay, so you did prepare the gulaman. And basically, for the rest of the world, to just to create the gulaman, all you have to do is get um, some gelatin, and some juice and some food coloring, and then chop it into squares, small squares, the way that Ania has it. Yep. Then next is another gulam. No, not, not, not gulam, it's green now. I'm just going to wipe my hand because it's spilled on me. It's green gulam. What what flavors are your gulamans? Uh, pandan. Okay, so the, the green one is the pandan. The red ones. The red one, they have no idea what the flavor is. Yeah, so typically you would use a fruit juice, right? A clear fruit juice. Yeah. Oh, somebody is peeking through your door. Is that mom? behind you <laughs> that's my other household helper oh, they're okay. all behind that door <laughs> <laughs> okay so um so you you actually uh use juice and then again you set it aside let it cool and then chop it and then they each gulaman has its different flavors dr b i'm starting to think you know more about filipino food than me I do. It's just that there's no Filipino grocery store here. That's my childhood, Ania, what you're, you're making right now. It's my childhood. Okay, so unfortunately, as a child, I grew up eating Chinese. Okay, so I grew up uh, having uh, Filipino street food. I do eat street food, though, in our country. So in our school... You're going to be amazed at how cheap this is. 10 pesos, that's not even $1. $1 is 50 pesos. 10 pesos is your cotton candy, your fish balls, everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, the fish balls. I remember they would have these fish balls and sticks, and then they would dip it in vinegar sauces. Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah, next is So go is like your tapioca pearl, just mm -hmm. not tapioca pearl but we call that halo halo right yes this is halo halo please don't say halo halo it's halo halo but it's spelt halo halo <laughs> yes I, I have american god sisters and i asked them when they came here how do you say how do you say h-a-l-o h-a-l-o and they said halo halo it's halo halo mix mix the next I have white beans here. It's filled to the brim with juice. So much sugar, Ania. That's why I'm... That's why I told them you're going to have a nice... Nice night tonight because you get a glass full of sugar. Yes. Next we have, this is shaved ice, crushed ice, which is in this paper container. So, 
So something that the rest of the world typically does not have is an ice shaver. So we have, if, if I guess in the United States, we have uh, crushed ice machines in our, our refrigerators, but it's not quite as uh, fine as the shaved ice. And the shaved ice is actually kind of like a, like a, a, a knife on a block and it runs over a block of ice and creates the shavings. But now I guess they have machines that make that, right, Nania? Yeah, we have an we have an ice shaver here actually, but we can shave the ice. But this is how our ice shaver looks. Okay, perfect. So you put the ice inside the the lid portion. Yeah, it opens up on the top here. It opens up on the top here. You put the container here. This in. You go like that. Awesome. So I'm so gonna just fill this glass with ice cream. Ice cream. And they want ice cream. So I was able to ask my brother to give me some of his ice cream. And yeah, what is the point of the ice exactly? The point of the ice? Yes, why is it there basically? <laughs> I think it's to mix everything together and to like, because the sugar. Yeah, to water it down. Yeah. Because the milk you put in is also even worse. One moment. Okay, I got ice cream. When I open this, it's going to be very sad, but there's that much left. It's just vanilla ice cream because it's just a van plain vanilla ice cream. It's just super thick vanilla ice cream that we have in our house. They just really something. We can't hear you, Tejas. Oh, I'm saying is it just thick because of the way you bought it or is it like frozen over because of the way you... Oh, they make it specifically thick. Oh, okay. All right, let me show you the cover. Super thick. <laughs> super thick, yeah. It's called super thick vanilla. Then we're almost done. Just the ube halaya for them. Neo, do you plan on mixing this thing? Oh no, we lost her. Ania, yes, she has there to make Oh, there she is. Okay, I have a, one in my laptop in case. Sorry, the Uber Light tastes good. Then next we have milk. This is evaporated milk. I'm pretty sure you can buy that in the States. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm just going to pour it around. This is like even a fattier version of milk. Yay. And then they said they wanted pandan flavored super sticks and chocolate flavored. Wait, what this is pandan because I'm not really sure. Pandan is the leaf. It's a okay. leaf. Cool, cool. How many are you? Don't you also make like jellies out of pandan? Because I think I've had those. I've never had a pandan jelly. The most pandan I've had is the pandan chicken. Hey. Yeah. So this is how my halo halo looks like mm -hmm. i'm not gonna eat this this is gigantic by the way can you see ania that is beautiful get the one oh that looks great looks okay. tasty now i have another one i have another one over here this is made by professional chefs <laughs> without the ice <laughs> So it's really meant to be colorful. 
Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. mostly it from me. Are there any questions? Okay, so yeah, we want to know how you eat that. Hi, Dr. B, can you repeat it again? Because you got how <laughs> So how are you going to eat that? We're all waiting for you to, to, uh, to demonstrate that. Uh, they're going to get a big spoon. So you have a long spoon? Yeah. yeah, so usually we have a very long spoon. I don't have a long spoon at the moment. I have a wooden spoon. Okay, and, and, and so and show them. This one cup is just for one person. This one cup is for the whole house, right? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there. Any, by any chance, do you know the amount of calories in this? No, oh my God. I, I don't think you want to calculate that. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this, this is what I planned on eating for myself this size, mm -hmm. but this is the size of glass we had available. Yeah. Usually, so when, when we were little kids, we would make, so we would line up like a bunch of small glasses, right? And yeah. you do it kind of like uh, assembly style. So first you do um, first color, second color, third color, fourth color. Then you add your ice or, or the ice cream actually sits underneath the ice for us. Right. And then yeah. you take, um, you take your ice, put it on top and then you pour your condensed milk in it. And then you start mixing it and every kid gets then one of the glasses. So, okay, so the whole how it looks very nice, yeah. very sweet. And it actually spilled. Okay. And everybody, does everybody there, um, eat from the same cup or everybody serves? We're going to divide it amongst themselves because we got one had like a spout so that it doesn't get as messy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. The sweet side of your cooking class for today. Very good. Uh, Thank maybe, you. Again. Maybe we can show pages and Anya together so everyone can see the final product. Where Tejas, is did you have here? Yeah. <laughs> did you eat all your food already, Tejas? <laughs> I ate one, but not all of it's gone. Uh, wait, let me just like, arrange it properly now. Um, this is really heavy, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, wait. And I don't know how you can see this. You got to cant it a little bit more, Tejas. Yay. There you go. Good job. Yay. Did yeah. you get a picture? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yay. Awesome, you guys. Uh, okay, so for next week, um, you have been signed out. Am I signed out? Um, for next Don't week, worry, Dr. B, you will, you will continue. I'm, I'm going the other side to start another okay. meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you guys are going to be coming with me to South Florida. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you guys, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Palm beaches and Miami where I live. So hopefully you guys will come next week to watch that. Um, and anything else, Raphael, that we need to share? Yes, I have. Uh, so uh, next Monday, you guys will be starting the practical phase, right? So you'll be added to a team. The email will be sent on Monday. So make sure to stay tuned to your email. The next step will come out soon. OK? And also, if you didn't pay, Make sure to pay it as soon as possible. We can accept till next week. Perfect. Okay, so we'll see everybody next week. Peace and love. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye.